Hello. Hello. Hi, I'm V. Nice to meet you again. Yeah. <laughs> I run a music school, so I'm coming oh, cool. to ask you three questions based on the music school point of view. Yeah. So, as you, you teach guitar, right? So, do. What, what do you think are the essential quality of a guitar teacher? I think, well, the, there, there's so many things coming to my mind, so I'm just going to get those out. Yeah. All right. The first one is that uh, whether you play guitar or bass or keyboards or saxophone, it's really good to have a, a strong sense of time. So it's not just the drummer that has to have time. You have to have time too. So I, I make all my students stomp on the ground. So when they, before they do anything, I just go, you got to get a, a groove going. And if you're right-handed, use your left foot. Oh, because if you use your right foot, your guitar is going to bounce up and down and start to play because it's moving. So use your left foot, and then, you know. And, and then you, you, you learn to play with it, you know. But you also learn to play against it with a syncopation. Yeah. So if you go like, you know, what was he? And you can even clap, you can practice with clapping. You can hear sometimes it's with it, sometimes it's in between. The off kind of thing. Yeah. So in, in a way, the way I put it sometimes is, why let the drummer have all the fun? Because once you get it, it feels so good. Like it, it makes it more fun to play because you, you, you're, you're connected to the music in a stronger way. And it's not just rhythm, like solos too. Because to play the high, just because a note is high up doesn't mean there's no rhythm. So they go. And, and be able to, you know, control that. So I try to get everybody stomping. Very groovy. And uh, I would say the thing, like, just as, in terms of technique, mm. I, I noticed there's a, you know, I grew up in the 70s. Mm. And the 70s, a lot of the guitar players were still kind of coming from the, the, the blues school of guitar. So people wanted to feel a bend the string and do vibrato. I think now, a lot of guitar players will put the guitar between their legs and sort of go, and then it's much more this metal, the different kind of metal that I grew up with. Because even the, the metal guitar players that I grew up with were still had a bluesy element. So it is what it is. I mean, those are two different styles. But of course, I want, people to do the style I love a little bit. So I, I, I think it's important to have the thumb over the neck most of the time. So if you're doing a bar chord, you can't get the thumb over the neck. Yeah. But if you're, play, but it's like the, oh, I, I saw, I read the Prince book recently. Uh -huh. and, and Prince was a little guy, but he's still in the, in the photo. And, and, he was, he, and he was like 12 years old, so, you know, he was a little, little, little kid. And, and he had the, the major chord with the, with the thumb over. The Henderson and Pete Towns, like Spinball Wizard. Yeah. And if you if you can't reach that, your hands are too small. You can get one of those, <laughs> and then you you can do it, or yeah. or get like a, a your Fender Mustang or something. You know? so, but to me, that that's so important to be able to, be able to get that. And uh, again, not every if you're a classical guitar player, you, you do it differently. You play more like this, but then you're not going to have rock vibrato. Yeah. And you're not going to be able to bang away on it like a, like a you know, you know like like Pete Townsend would. Yeah. So uh, that's sort of my, my rock advice. And then for for, um, for, for like soloing, mm. the uh, so many. I mean, I've done this too, where where, where you, you know you learn all your scales. Yeah. And that's good, but it's also dangerous. It's not like a scale. Because scales aren't melodies. Yeah. And it's actually, I mean, I, I've, I've done this path where I learned all my scales, could play them really fast up and down. It's, you know, I've kind of made a career of that. But then I realized, I'm, I, this is not how melodies are put together. So, you know, every time you practice a scale, balance that with copying a melody. I mean, vocalists tend to have the best melodies, but you can also learn melodies from other instruments, you know, from a trumpet or a piano or, you know, but, you know, I think this, it's important to learn the scale. I think that's good, but that's not the only thing. You know, make sure to learn learn some melodies as well, and, and just notice how, like, in order to play them with with expression and, and make them sound good, 
Let's say they end up being more horizontal. Yeah. Whereas scales tend to be more vertical. You're, you're sort of going this way. Yes. Where a lot of the melodic playing is more 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 this way because then you can slide more. Right. So you know, there's the, the guitar is it's complicated that way. Yeah. You know, so there's, there's always five ways to play the same thing, but they'll each way will have certain different expressive elements that, that either are easy or difficult depending on the finger. Alright, so my next question right, is that I'm not too sure about region wise, but local wise, right, the sign up rate for guitar tends to be on low. Like, I mean, nowadays we have a lot of other startups, like in Singapore, it's more of K pop nowadays today. Right. right. So, as a guitarist of the uh, uh, heroes of my time, what do you think like people of my generation can do to, to, to boost this industry? Well, you have to sound good. You have to sound so good that people will want to listen to you. And that's hard. It's hard to sound good. It's, it's, this is a really noisy instrument. Yeah, yeah. It's very easy for the guitar to sound bad. <laughs> um, and, and so you really have to be truthful. Like, am I sounding good? Is this something that, that anyone will want to listen to? Um, and I think that's helpful. Also, the, like the guitar that, that, that most people grew up with is not by itself. It's, it's with a great singer, with a great drummer, with a great band, with a great song. And so that's, that's a lot of things to put together. And I think that's one of the reasons why, you know, music that's done with computers is, is, is popular because it's easier to do by yourself and then you bring in a singer and overdub them and you're done. Um, and with, with, with guitar, I mean, the biggest challenge when I was a kid was like finding the people and finding a rehearsal room. And that was, it was really hard. Like, where are we going to rehearse? Who's got a basement? You know, where, where the parents will let us be loud for three hours a day. That was almost impossible, but, but we managed to find finally some crazy lady who let us rehearse in her, her basement. And then, you know, to get the drummer to show up one time, it was, it's, it was really challenging to do that. But, uh, but we did. <laughs> and you made it industry. Yeah. All right. My last question is that through your entire catalog of songs, what are the three that you recommend that any guitar student should give a go? I'm sorry, I was thinking about something else. Again. <laughs> so you have like a huge library of songs you've written all over the years. Can you choose just three that every guitarist should? I mean, every oh, like three that every, everybody yeah, should yeah, know? Yeah. Oh my goodness. <laughs> well, the first one, the first thing that comes to mind is is something that's got strumming in it. I know a lot of modern guitar players have never strummed, and so I'm going to say. Um, I got every reason on earth to be mad Cause I didn't love the only girl I had And if I could get my way I'm getting myself locked up today But I can't, so I'll cry instead It's called I'll Cry Instead by the Beatles All right. And it's got that So it's got strumming and it's also has muting You know, the, on, on the bridge And it's got, you know, it's just all the cowboy chords. But it's a lot of metal people, like, never learn that style. Yeah. And so I think that, that's a good one. Uh, or anything like it. I think it's got strumming. Uh, after that, the, 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 the solo and Heartbreaker by Led Zeppelin. That. Just that much. Yeah. Like, it, 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 without, without that, you, you gotta have that. You know, the rest, if you learn the rest of it too, that's good too. But you at least get that. Bah, bah, bah. You know, so, what, what about one from your songs? <coughs> oh, from my <laughs> tunes? Yeah. My, I tend to be too complicated. Uh, I mean, the first one that comes to mind is Green Tin of 60's Mind. And, and actually, the reason I would learn it is not so much for that crazy intro thing, I would learn it for the minor 7 flat 5 chord. <laughs> I never knew what that what that chord was, but I learned it at school, so I was I was singing out of tune because I can't hear. Hopefully, I'm I, I probably pulled out too. I'm sorry, but anyway, it's a it's a A sharp minor seven flat five chord, which might be a substitute for an F sharp seven. That I never even realized that. But and, anyway, that's you know to learn. Um, it's 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 a very pianoish song, yes. where it, you know it's got the one thing on top of the bass line changing. 
It's got so like a sus two thing with harmonics and. And stomp it. Because that. Uh, uh, you got to be able to juggle those, those syncopations. Yeah. All right, I, I get this. All the questions I have for you for today. Awesome. Cool, thank man. You, thank you very much. Thank Paul. you. Right on. <laughs> all right.